Hi everyone, it's Maya Kenda. Welcome back to our channel. In today's video, I thought I would have a chat and speak about some of my favorite things to do in Seoul, South Korea. So I know a lot of you may be planning a trip there either this year or next now that restrictions have eased off and yeah I just thought following the vlog series that we uh, just did it'd be nice to share some of my favorite things to do so if this video is useful let me know and comment below where you'd like to visit and let's get started. So obviously South Korea is known for its incredible beauty and skincare scene so yeah I would definitely recommend to bring or make space in your luggage or bring an extra suitcase if you do go there obviously shopping for skincare and beauty related products is amazing there um, a few of my favorite places to go are the Olive Young in um, either Myeongdong or the one on Gangnam High Street um, I also like looking around Karuskil in Akujong and yeah there's some amazing flagship stores as well so i would definitely make sure that you go to the new solosu uh, flagship store in bukchon hanok village it's in the most incredible old style traditional house and in the flagship store they have every product that solosu has that you can test and also purchase they also wrap up the products beautifully and as you wait while i do that there's a little cafe and you just get um i think it was like a nice ginseng tea and traditional sweets as well so it's really worth a visit because the building and the way it's laid out is absolutely beautiful some other really cool flagship stores to visit are the Dr. Jart one in Karusigil as well. I went with Uniani and every time they have a new product or a new product line and they're promoting it, they have an amazing, I guess, theme in the store. So the new pore range was the one that they were actively promoting when I was there in May and they had this curling thing and the whole like basement floor was dedicated to this new product line. Obviously you can try all the products when you're in there and purchase them and they usually always give out really good samples as well. Um, I would also make sure that you check out Gentle Monster and Tambrins. They're also uh, in Karusgil and walking distance from Dr. Jart, so you can visit those three flagship stores, take some nice photos and videos and obviously, yeah, shop some K-Beauty. And then I think one of my favorite places that I really enjoyed going to was Amore Songsu. So Amore Pacific is a massive company conglomerate that runs a lot of the major KBD brands that we know like Etude House, uh, Innisfree, Solowasu, Hera, Espoir. And basically all of the products that they have under those brands are there in Amore Songsu for you to try. So they have everything from all the cleansers, all the SPFs under all of the brands, um, makeup, etc. So you could spend a long time there trying everything out. And yeah, you can also purchase any of the products that you try there as well. They also have a sample section where you, it's almost like a pick and mix with samples that you can um, get a little bag and test, I think it was like five. And obviously if you make a purchase as well, they were super generous with deluxe size mini samples um, when I went there. So I highly recommend. They also have an Osluk cafe in the same building as well. And Songsu is a very trendy area. There's some really nice cafes, so it's well worth a day out. Obviously, because you are in the land of K-beauty and skincare, you can also treat yourself to a facial. Um, whenever I go to Seoul, I usually will always get a facial from one of the clinics. Um, I prefer the more gentle, aesthetic ones. I haven't really gone for any ones that, you know, have anything invasive or surgery, etc. Um, but I do highly recommend the Triada K Spa. The glow that I had after that facial was immense. Um, they analyze your skin beforehand and the treatment I got was amazing. The spa is absolutely beautiful and I love Triad Decay products. I think they're very high quality and the results kind of spoke for themselves. My skin was probably the best that it had ever been and that was coming off of a kind of 12 hour flight. Um, for alternatives, you can also try the Shangpri Spa, which is also really good in Chongdam. And I've also been to the Solosu Spa. 
and both those facials were really good and it's just a really nice thing to do when you're in Seoul and I love to book a facial the day after I land or you know within the first few days of arriving just so that I can replenish my skin after that long flight especially now when you have to wear a mask when you're traveling so yeah that's what I did last time I went to the Triada K spa and yeah the my my skin was just glowing and was a lot brighter and smoother after that facial and yeah it's just a, a nice little treat for yourself on holiday So the next thing I'm gonna say is cafe hopping because I feel Seoul is just so aesthetic. It's almost like it's been built for Instagram. There are so many new cafes, themed cafes, uh, cafes that do the most amazing cakes and drinks. And honestly, I think if you lived in Korea for a year, you still would be able to hit even half the amount of beautiful cafes that they have. Um, but some of my favorite areas just to wander along and like stop into a cafe include Samcheongdong, Iksongdong, uh, Mangwon is also a really good area, uh, Karasugil, but um, last trip I went to Iksongdong and I went to Cafe Onion, which I think if you watch a lot of vlogs from South Korea or influencers that live in South Korea, you'll probably recognize, but the cakes there honestly were just amazing. I think I got this matcha and white chocolate scone and it was, it was absolutely heavenly. Um, Seoul Cafe where they do the kind of black bread with the slab of butter and red bean. Um, they also have Watermeal which is a really nice brunch cafe and they've got the like Watermeal in the front. Nakwon which is kind of like a train themed cafe in a traditional Hanok is absolutely beautiful as well. And a top tip, I would go as soon as the cafes open. Most cafes in that area will open at around 11, 11.30. So when I went, there was obviously no queue. I could easily get a seat. I could sit down. I could take photos because especially Cafe Onion, it can get super busy uh, if you go later in the day. One thing I always do when I go back to South Korea as well is I always go to Guangzhou Market. So Guangzhou Market is a massive market, but I go there predominantly to eat. So if you go into the heart of the market, there's lots of different food stores. You can sit down and every have everything from like tteokbokki, maya kimbap, which is amazing. Um, but I always go for bindatok, which is a mung bean pancake that they make, and also kalguksu. So for those of you that have seen the Netflix series Street Food, there was an episode on um, based in Seoul and there was this lady there and they followed her story and how she makes her own kalguksu in Guangzhou market. Now I went to that stall before it became really famous and the kalguksu that you get is so good. I love knife cut noodles. They have that little bit of chew. They're a little bit thicker than uh, some noodles and she makes the best dumplings. It's just so hearty and I like to go there for breakfast because it's very empty. I have tried to go for dinner once and I had to queue to be seated at her stall. Um, obviously now I think she's really famous and even though there's other stalls that do kalguksu, I think everyone descends on hers. Um, but it's really nice to go for kind of like 10 a.m. breakfast or, you know, brunch. And the noodles are really affordable. I think they're like 8,000 won, which is like five or six pounds and huge. Uh, but yeah, do get the dumplings as well because she, she makes the best dumplings. Uh, so I highly recommend a visit. Another thing which is really nice to do, obviously if it's your first time going to Seoul, you probably want to visit one of the palaces. The most popular ones are Gyeongbokgung and Changdokgung. They're quite close to each other and you get free entry if you dress in traditional hanbok. There are loads of stores around both palaces that you can do that. Um, I've been to the palaces so many times because a lot of the time when we go to Seoul, we have friends that will come and 
we take them but um, if you have already been to Seoul and you still just want to have a nice leisurely walk around the area then I highly recommend walking around Samcheong Dong or Bukcheon Hanok village um, this is the area where there's a lot of traditional houses but there's also some really cute cafes and some really nice boutiques one of my favorites is Grand Hand and they do really nice perfumes scents home fragrances and really unusual scents I would say that you probably can't find elsewhere and it's housed in a traditional Hanok village you can also stay in the Hanok village as well um, so there's loads of different Airbnbs or uh, hotels in the actual Hanoks that you can stay one of the famous one uh, is Rakoje which is one of the more premium end ones, um, which is supposed to be beautiful. Fun fact, that's also where House of Doha filmed a lot of their um, products and did a photography shoot there. So if you see the kind of House of Doha products with the beautiful hanok in the background, it was in Rakoje. Um, I am going to be staying there my next trip this month. So I'm super excited to see that. I have stayed in a hanok once and it was just a really nice experience. Uh, it was super comfortable, super cozy, and and they do make the best breakfast for you the next day. So I would highly recommend even just spending an hour wandering along the streets um, of Bhutan Hanok village. And also the Solosu flagship store that I mentioned earlier is there as well. Finally, a lot of people don't know, but there's a really good cocktail bar scene in Seoul. And there's a few of my favorite cocktail bars that have actually been featured in the Asia's best cocktail bar list, world's best cocktail bar list. So some of my favorite ones to go to are Alice in Chongdam, which is a Alice in Wonderland themed speakeasy. So there's a really discreet sign with a white rabbit and you follow the white rabbit down the hall, which is a staircase into a florist shop. And then as you open the door, it takes you into this beautiful uh, bar called Alice. They make amazing cocktails there. The staff's always really friendly. If you can, try and reserve a table and try to be seated at the bar so that you can see all of the um, waiters make the cocktails themselves. But I highly recommend Alice. I think we've been going every trip since 2016. Um, I also really like Pussyfoot Saloon, which is a kind of train carriage themed cocktail bar. They also do really nice cocktails as well and my new favorite cocktail bar is one called Bar Cham it's in Chongno and it is in a traditional Korean house and they make very traditional yet modern cocktails there usually is quite a wait it is very popular but some of the best cocktails I've ever had have been in Bar Cham and again the staff there were just super lovely helped talk through the menu and they also gave us free shots those are some of my favorite things that I like to do every time I visit Seoul I hope it was helpful and hopefully I can put in some vlog footage that you guys can see as well let me know in the comments if you've got a trip to Seoul plan because I love speaking to anyone that has a trip to Seoul plan because I'm always like oh you should go here you should go here um but yeah I hope this was fun I uh, just a few few other tips I think if you have got a uh, trip to Seoul is I would make sure that you get a T-Money card. This just makes traveling a lot easier in general. You can use them on buses, trains, etc. It's kind of, I guess, the equivalent of an Oyster card um, that we have in London. Um, as you will have a foreign debit card, make sure that you look for ATM signs that says global ATM. Um, if you try and use it in other ones that don't have this sign, you can get difficulties getting money out as well. Um, you can get taxis everywhere in Seoul. There are so many. Um, they do have three different color taxis, yellow, silver and black black being the more premium, silver being mid-range and the yellow being more common and cheaper prices as well. And yeah, I would say if you're planning a trip, you probably want to stay either in kind of Hongdae or Yeonnandong or Myeongdong. I stayed in Myeongdong in April and a lot of the shops had closed, but it still felt like a really good base. I personally like staying in Myeongdong because it's on three different subway lines. You've got access to the green line, the orange line, um, and also the blue line. So it's really easy to go down to like Gangnam or Akujong, but you can also easily go to Hongdae. And I just think it's quite a good 
place to base yourself, but it definitely was not as happening as it was previous days. Hongdae is really good for nightlife. It's a younger crowd, it's obviously a uni town. So yeah, definitely if you're interested in that side of things, you can stay there. And then I would say Gangnam is more the kind of business side, but it's quite far south and it can kind of take you a long time via the subway to get to Hongdae or Myeongdong. So yeah, I hope this was helpful. I could obviously speak about visiting Seoul for ages, but I just thought I would share some of my favorite things to do. So I hope you enjoy this. And in three weeks time, I'll be going back again to Seoul. So hopefully I'll be able to share some new favorite cafes, new favorite places. We'll actually be traveling outside of Seoul as well. So we're going to Daejeon where I was born, Jeonju and to the coast, to the beach in Gangneung. So yeah, I'm super excited and I'll be doing more vlogs then. So until then, I hope everyone is keeping happy and healthy and I will see you in the next video. Bye.